Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Welcome to Fishing with Cash. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a very specific bait. The Guggen Squad Grass Hero. Go and watch last week's video, which I'll leave in the description down below. I caught so many bass, and I caught them on this specific jig. With the Grass Hero, I really never was a fan of swim jigs until I gave this guy a try. I would always still bring in a bunch of crap from weeds to muck, and this really avoids it. I think the main reason why is because of how the head is. It's very pointed. Feels like it doesn't pick up nearly as much. I got, I got nothing but positive things to say about it. Well, besides one. One thing I noticed that when I was fishing it though, on the pond, was that it would come back up with a bunch of pond scum on it from the bottom if it dragged down there for too long and hit a big nasty pot of it. That's the only thing negative I can say about this thing. I've never had a swim jig that has been able to go through grass like this though. Just, I'm blown away. I love it. So one of the things that I think makes the Guggen Squad Grass Hero different, and I'm not being paid by them to say this stuff, is, once again, I think it's the head. I think that's a major thing about it, is that it's this pointed head. And the brush guard feels a lot thicker than other ones. As opposed to this one, which I don't even remember who makes this. I think this might be a Strike King right here. But notice how it's not as pointed. It's more, it's not a football jig, but it's not as pointed. So I think this guy just doesn't cut through things as much as like the Grass Hero. And I also noticed that with the Brush Guard, feels a lot weaker, which is the reason why I think I gave up a little bit on swim jigs for a while. Now, if you guys have watched some of my other videos, you guys know I'm very simple when it comes to color selection. On a clear day, I really like throwing this uh, green pumpkin. And another option is Guggen Squad makes a rotting pumpkin color. That's what they call it, at least. I'll throw that if it's sunny or clear water, especially. If it's really cloudy and really murky water, black and blue all the way. And if I'm fishing somewhere that I know is mainly a smallmouth, Reservoir especially or river system. I'll throw a chartreuse For weight sizes. I really like the 3 8 I think that the 3 8 is very versatile I think it works very well for especially going through like around 5 feet to 8 feet of water If I get up to around 8, I'm definitely gonna go over to that half ounce and I might throw a half ounce even around 5 It just depends on the time of year Depends on how far I want to get it out. There's a lot of variables that play into it. But so far though, I've really have enjoyed throwing this lure. So as you guys saw from some of my other swim jigs, I like this Yoto worm by 10,000 fish. It's very much like the spunk shad. And I have a few of those too, I like those. I really like those though on my chatter baits. The trailer that I was using in the last video was a Rage Tail by Strike King. They went nuts for this bad boy. Strike King also makes my favorite stick bait to use, which is the Ocho 5, which I was also using in that video, which, just like the Rage Tail, is infused with coffee and salt. And I've just noticed I've had phenomenal, phenomenal luck with those. Who knew that bass likes coffee? So this is the exact lure I was using in my last video. The Goon Squad Grass Hero, it's got the Strike King Rage Tail. And if you look closely, one of the tails was bitten off. So what I was throwing this on was my B Hitte Rod. It's the Randall Tharp series. I use it mainly for chatter baits and lipless, but I noticed that I did pretty well. So this lure is fantastic for going through grass. I don't get hung up. I've had zero problems with it so far, besides bringing back pond scum every now and then. 
One thing that I think I would change is that probably in the future I'm going to go to my heavy rod. I'm not really crazy on setting the hook hard. That's just not my style. I've tried doing it. I'm more of a... I just set it. I'm not crazy. I'm not doing this giant whipping thing all the time. That's just not my style. And I noticed I lost a lot of fish on this rod. So I'm probably going to go to a heavier rod. I'm probably going to go to my Guggen Squad Power Rod. The other thing you want to keep in mind is you want to be in a gear ratio of around 7 to 8. My power rod is an 8 gear ratio and this guy is a 7.5. So this guy works really well for the speed and gear retrieval that I need. And what I found really worked for me with this guy was dragging it across the bottom and giving it little hops here and there, letting it go back down. Maybe dr drag it back in very, very slowly. Just kind of pop it up, let it sink back down. Maybe do a few hops in a row, let it sit there. And that was the key for me finding that bite. The other thing I'd say for setup wise is that you want to run fluorocarbon for these guys. It's just going to be invisible and you don't want braid. You might be able to get away with it, but it's not going to sink as far. And especially if you're fishing deeper water and going through grass out in deeper water, you're going to want to be able to let that thing sink. And you want it to sink faster so you don't have to spend as much time waiting for it to fall. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you guys went and subscribed. It just takes that one little click over here, over here, S somewhere. It's somewhere over here. And thanks to all my current subscribers. It means a lot to me that you guys actually tune in and watch these videos. It really means a lot to me. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change out this trailer since, you know, one of the tails is missing on this guy. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.